What's up, YouTube? Welcome back to Celio's Network. So, this past weekend on Saturday, I won a standard League Cup with Zoro Rock, the list on the screen, which I will be going over. Um, so, first, I'm going to give a quick tournament report and then go over the list and the changes that I'm making moving forward for NAIC. So, round one, I played against Lapras which uh, is a very scary matchup in my opinion because if they get the Volcanion Prism spread um, at the right time, like turn two, maybe turn three, if they just, if they get it off and then they're able to clean up with Lapras, it can be, um, it can really snowball. And so it's really threatening to see. But um, I went first and my opponent did not have the greatest first turn or so. Um, on turn two, I started taking knockouts with Claw Slash. I believe I knocked out a Remoraid. Yeah, I knocked out his Remoraid on turn two with Claw Slash. From there, drawing cards was a bit of an issue for him. Um, he was playing supporters, just not hitting everything that he needed. Um, on when I was at six, when I was at four prizes and he was at six. Um, he kind of had a bench of mana feed to make a play to take his first knockout. But benching the mana feed did two things for him, for me really. Um, I was able to Dangerous Rogue GX a Lapras because of the extra benched Pokemon. Um, it was his third benched Pokemon, so a uh, strong DC choice ban got me the knockout on a Lapras with Dangerous Rogue. And then I was able to take my last knockout on the mana feed with a Riotous Beating. Um, so that was round one. Round two, I played against Ryan Antonucci. He's playing Buzzgarb. Um, he got a fairly okay setup for Buzzgarb. You know, he got Garbotoxin turn two. I believe he got it turn two, and I had the Fuel Blower right away. Um, but after that, he got another one that set up, another tool on his Garbotoxin, and I didn't have a Fuel Blower answer for it. The, the immediate turn uh, but I did field blower it, uh, the turn after I believe so I used both of my field blowers uh, on turns two and four I think um, and the prize came the prize count came down to he had one prize card left and I had four um, so I did this play where he had a low hand it was probably around four or five cards um, and I uh, I Guzmed up his Garbotoxin with a choice, uh, it had a choice band or a belt on it. I can't remember which one, but it wasn't a float stone. So I Guzmed up that Garbotoxin and I, uh, my plan was to just let it sit there until I had a Guzma knockout on his powered up Buzzwall GX. So uh, I Guzmed it up and we kept ending each other back and forth, except he was getting end to one. And I was getting end to, I believe, three or four. Um, but we just kept ending each other back and forth. Um, and I wasn't getting what I needed. I think I needed, like, strong choice uh, Guzma to bring up the Buzzwool to knock it out to maybe win the following turn. Um, but about five turns into this, I'd say, possibly even six. We were passing back and forth for a really long time. Um, he, um, he had drawn into the Guzma with his supporter from the previous turn, and I was out of ends. Uh, so when I passed to him, he just guzma and won the game. Um, but that was really close. Uh, it would have been less close if he had hit the float stone for that Garbotoxin instead of the Choicer Belt, but it doesn't always happen that way. So I'm 1-1 at this point. Uh, just played a uh, very good game against Ryan Antonucci. Sorry, hang on. PTCGO logged me out. I was probably idle for too long. So, round two, I played a very good game against Ryan, against uh, Buzzgarb. Much, it was very intense for a round two of a League Cup. Uh, so, round three... I'm 1-1. I am playing against uh, Kenny Nyo, 
I believe his last name's pronounced. I always say it wrong. Uh, but Kenny and his last name's spelled N-G-O, I believe. Um, he is playing Xerneas Break. Uh, which is a weird match for sure. Um, but if I get a Claw Slash going, I can run through his Pokemon with either two Strongs or a Strong and a Kukui. Um, so unfortunately for me, I go first and my turn one supporter is Kukui. And then my turn two supporter is N. And then turns three through seven, I don't play a supporter. <laughs> uh, so I went on s no supporter for a while. Uh, but off of that N, I did get a Lycanroc and an energy. And I already had an energy off the Kakui the previous turn. So I was able to... Uh, take some prizes i knocked out a zern i knocked out a lele with a dangerous rogue and then i knocked out a xerneas that he geomancied with with a claw slash um so i was at three prizes to his six but drawing extremely poorly um I, so i was on a no supporter draw for four to five turns um but luckily for me his deck is clunky and because of the pressure that uh, my Lycanroc put on his Pokemon. Um, I was able to knock out the Lele and a Xerneas with energy on it. The Lele also had energy. It had DC and XP share on it. So that was pretty vital knocking it out. Um, and I was able to... Uh, that, that slight lead that I got in the beginning was able to make up for the no drawing that I had for the next... For the mid game pretty much. Um, so he got the prize count down to... Uh, he had two prizes and I had three. Um, and that's when I started drawing supporters. And I checked his discard pile. I realized all three Guzmas were in his discard pile. And I made an educated guess that that deck probably doesn't run for a Guzma. Or any other kind of gusting effect. Um, so from there, I think I retreated three GX Pokemon that all had 160 from uh, Xerneas Breaks attack. So at the end of the game, I had three or four GX Pokemon just short of being knocked out because he couldn't Guzma any of them back up. Uh, so I just kept using Guzma or Acerola or retreating um, until I knocked out a Lele and a Xerneas Break. So I got away with a close one there because my opponent was out of Guzma. Uh, very good game to Kenny though. Round four... Uh, there were a small, there was only like three seniors or something, so I played against a senior this round, but um, he's a really good senior, uh, Luke Smith. He won Charlotte Regionals actually in senior division, and I believe he's in the running for top 16. Um, he was playing Ultra Necrozma Malamar, um, a matchup that I am usually comfortable in. It can be really close if the Ultra Necrozma players good and they hit a couple things that they need uh, and I don't just uh, if I don't get the immediate aggressive start I need as well um, so I got a turn two dangerous rogue GX on his I want to say on his um, ultra necrozma and I also knocked out a Malamar the following turn uh, he had a bench of dawn wings so I got a knockout on that and I believe I finished the game with, um, like, a Claw Slash with, like, two Strongs, a Choice Band, and a Kukui or something crazy like that. Um, I, I believe I finished the game by doing, like, 190 to Ultra Necrozma. Um, but it was just, if that, that match from the start is usually a back-and-forth prize trade. And when it goes into that prize trade, it's hard for the Zoro Rock player to catch up and keep up with it. Um, but luckily I was able to get that dangerous rogue early and I don't think he responded immediately to that. Uh, usually in that matchup, what you want to do is hunt down the Malamars, like dangerous rogue ride is beating it. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, bloodthirsty eyes, then ride is beating or bloodthirsty eyes then claw slash, but he had a threatening ultra necrozma. So I had to take care of that early, unfortunately. Um, next round five. So I'm three and one at this point. Uh, we only have a top four. It was 20 masters, I think. And we're not able to ID into cut. No 3-1-1s will make it into cut, actually. Um, 
So myself and Steve Zhang are both playing Zoro Rock at 3-1, and we have to play it out to see who makes cut. I actually didn't know this till after the game, but if Steve beat me this game, he would make he would get his world's invite. Um, so Zoro Rock Mirror. Um, so Steve goes first, and I believe he has a Zoro a Zorua active, and he Bridget's two Zorua and a Rock Ruff. Um, I would have Bridgeted a Zorua and two Rock Ruffs, but after the game, he told me that his second Rock Ruff was prized. He was only playing two, but he switched for the next day to three. Um, so Zorua, Zorua, Rock Ruff, um, attach energy, pass. I went Zorua, 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 Rock Ruff, Rock Ruff. Um, so I, I started... Um, Zerua and Rockruff, and I believe I, let's see, Zerua, I started Zerua on the bench, Rockruff, Rockruff, yeah, so I started Zerua, and then I Bridgeted for one more Zerua, two Rockruffs, um, and I either float stone the Zerua to retreat to Lele, or I attached energy somewhere, um, I think I just float stone the Zerua to the Lele, and attach energy to Rockruff, um, he, Hunt, he hunted down my rock roughs really really well so uh turn two he got a uh, bloodthirsty to ride a speeding on my um rock rough with energy and turn two i attacked his zorark with a dce choice band lele putting it at 110 and i benched another rock rough um he guzma that rock rough and killed it with riot of speeding putting him at four prizes i energy drived his Zorark with 110 already to knock it out, even at four to four prizes. Um, that turn, he whiffed what he needed and he just swung into my Lele. And I got a nice turn where I pulled off a multi switch move and I got to Bloodthirsty Eyes up his Lycanroc GX on the bench and Dangerous Rogue it, putting me at two prizes and him at four. And from there, I had a Lycanroc on the board ready to go, and he had nothing that can answer it, and he wasn't playing Enhanced Hammer. Uh, so my Lycanroc unchecked would just knock out his Zorark the next turn, and that's exactly what I did. Um, so I went 4-1, going into Cut. Uh, cut is myself with Zorark, Jason Anakariko with Psychic Malamar, John Sundstrom with Buzzwell Lycanroc, and Ryan Antonucci with Buzzgarb, my only loss from Swiss. So it's a really diverse uh, top four, and I actually think it's like four of the best decks, if not the four best decks in top four. We had Psychic Malamar, Buzzrock, Buzzgarb, and Zororock. Um, luckily, I am playing against Psychic Malamar in the top four. Um, I actually thought he was playing Ultra Malamar before this, so I thought it would be a little bit of a closer match. Um... So game one, uh, game one was kind of a blowout. Nothing, nothing wrong with how Jason played. It's just you need to get super lucky in that matchup, and Zorark just has to have a moderate game. And I had an okay game. I got a Bridget turn one. Um, I was able to knock out a Dawn Wings and a Necrozma and possibly a Lele, if not two Malamars slash Malamar and Inke. Um, I don't remember game one too well, I just know it was pretty one-sided for me. Uh, game two, he managed to get out a Mars Shadow, but whiffed the energy he needed to attack with it. So it was kind of like he benched the Mars Shadow and then Sycamore to try to hit what he needed. And I think he needed like a Malamar and a Float Stone and he missed it. Um, and so I was just able to bloodthirsty eyes, the Mars shadow up choice band, ride a speeding 150 knockout. Um, and eventually he got the Mars shadow back to get a kill, but then I just ride a speeding 150 to, um, again. Um, cause he, I don't think he copied I don't think he was able to copy Dawnwing's GX attack with it. Um, but he did get the Mars shadow back, uh, in the second game. He used, he had it on the bench twice, I believe. Um, so that was, it was a pretty quick top four, unfortunately. It, it, it is a pretty one-sided matchup, even though they have the Marsh Shadow. Um, unless you pair the Marsh Shadow with a Pseudo Wudo, it's pretty easy to get knocked out by the Zorark player. 
Um, and then, so I 2 0 Jason and Ryan Antonucci 2 0 John. So I'm playing against Buzzgarb in top two. Um, neither of us really need the uh, first place over the second place. Um, if he gets. If he gets first or second, he just needs any League Cup placing to get his invite. And regardless if I get first or second, I need top 256 at Internets to get my Worlds invite. Uh, so we're playing it out, obviously. Um, we're friendly, so I think we both knew each other's list. Like, even if we didn't know it from the Swiss rounds, we talked about our list and everything between each round. Um... I don't remember who goes first. I do know that I take game one. Um, obviously, it's really close, but if you can get Field Blower at the right time and go off with a Mew EX on their uh, Buzzwell GXs, it's really, really easy if you can if you get those Field Blowers and the Mews at the same time. Um, game two, I... Excuse me. Game two, I started with Mew EX. Um, I went first. Um, he retreated to a baby buzz or something, cause so I wouldn't get the turn two ride is beating with the Mew EX. Uh, he got his turn two Garbotoxin, and I was never able to get the field blower out of there. I grinded out the game a bit until he was like at two prizes, and I was at five or something bad like that, and just scooped. Uh, game three. Um, I'm sorry, so he went first game two. That that makes a lot more sense. He went first game two, and I started with Mui X. That's why it was bad. Um, so he, like, attached Bench Trubbish Floatstone Pass, and I had Mui X, so I bridge it, and, uh, I don't think I did anything with the Mui X. I probably attached to a Rock Ruff or something, and then he got turned to Garbotoxin, and I was ne never able to get the Field Blower that game so that is how game two went and it was just a blowout from there because i started with the mu ex he got a turn uh three knockout on it but i wasn't able to attack with versatile because of the garbotoxin so game three i started with um rock rough zarua zarua um after my turn one draw so i, I go first i start rock rough zarua and i draw zarua so i bench it i attach a, um, I attach a strong to rock rough and then I pass, but I had, um, I had Cynthia timer ball field blower in my hand. So I wanted to see if he puts a float stone and a fighting fury belt down on his buzz wool and trubbish. Um, I can get a little bit of value off of that field blower timer ball for my lichen rock, possibly a lichen rock and a Zorark, and then cynthia for more cards uh and that's exactly what i did actually um so he went strong hit my rock rough for 50 30 on his arua oh no actually 60 sorry he hit it for 60 because he got strong belt and he put a float stone on the trub and i drew timer balled um i think i just hit one so i got zorark uh field blower the float stone belt off of his buzz and trub uh cynthia um, and I likely just went for a claw slash there. Um, I don't remember too much of the game after that. Um, I just remember my cheeky, uh, hold my hand because I, I kind of liked what I had going on. Um, and at the end game, he had garbotoxin down and it wasn't hurting me anymore it was only hurting him and i had a really big lichen rock and he had a buzz with one energy and another buzz with one energy and he uh his active buzz had like 130 from a claw slash on it i think um and he cynthia looking for a float stone then counted his discard pile saw all four float stones were gone and scooped um so, yeah, I went 2-1 in the top two versus uh, Buzzgarb, and I won the tournament with this Zorark list. So, let's look at the list real quick, and then I will talk about changes, because, trust me, there are changes. So, we're starting off with the 4-4 Zorark GX. 
Obviously, trade is such a good ability. Discard a card from your hand, draw two cards. Uh, you're able to cycle through your deck and just get rid of everything you don't need for the game that you're playing. <clears throat> Riotous Beating does a maximum of 120 in standard or 150 with a choice band. And Trickster GX we won't be using in this deck. Uh, then we're running 3-2 like in Rock GX. We're using that new 70 HP Rock Ruff because 70 HP matters a lot versus all of the buzz wall that you'll be seeing in the current meta. Uh, so like in Rock GX, we got this guy doing uh, Bloodthirsty Eyes. When you evolve it, you gust up one of your opponent's bench Pokemon to the active spot. Super powerful. Claw Slash doing 110. In this deck, we're only running strong, so the minimum Claw Slash is ever doing is 130. Um, and then Dangerous Rogue, 50 damage for each of your opponent's benched Pokemon. Normally, you can get a one-shot on most things if they have at least three benched Pokemon, because you'll have a strong, at least one strong, so that's 170 if they have three benched. And then Choice Band makes it 200. Uh, so this is just such a great card. Uh, probably one of the best cards in the format. One Mewi X for Versatile, um, it's Psychic type, so Versatile, you can use the attacks of any Pokemon in play, so you just want to use this to uh, copy your own Riotous Beating against Psychic Weak Pokemon, like Buzzwool GX. And then Mewtwo is great to two-shot Baby Buzz while they two or three shot you, um, or one-shot a Buzzwool GX that has three energy on it with a choice ban. Um, it can also be used if your opponent like has to bench a Mew EX, like if they start with it maybe, um, against a Necrozma GX that used Black Ray instead of Prismatic Burst. Um, also good to one-shot Baby Buzz if they have three energy on it. Solid, um, solid one prize attacker though. I've been using this a lot in practice and tournament against even things that aren't Psychic Week just to get some chip damage in with a one prizer. Then we have three Tapu Lele GX uh, for its Wonder Tag ability. When you play this Pokemon from your hand onto your bench, search your deck for a supporter card. Great, great card. It also has Energy Drive 20 times the amount of energy on both active Pokemon. Energy Drive gets a considerable amount of use since we are playing 4 DCE. It's a pretty solid vanilla attacker for that. Uh, so, yeah, the Pokemon, nothing too fancy going on. Just stick with the basics and it really works. Um, so, first for trainers, we have Energy Lotto. So, this is in place of the ninth fighting energy, the ninth energy, or the fifth fighting energy, which I was playing a basic fighting previous to the Energy Lotto, or Lotto, however you say it. Um, so, look at the top seven cards of your deck. You may reveal an energy card you find there and put it into your hand. Um, so actually, uh, Eric Gansman turned me on to this. He posted a Poke Beach article that he wrote, and in his Zora Rock list for Sheffield, he had Energy Lotto. And I was like, yo, that's a sick idea. Like, it's so important against Buzz Rock and the Mirror to hit your turn one energy for Rock Ruff, so why not play Energy Lotto? Uh, and it's, it's a really great card. Uh, so two Field Blower. Uh, at times, this could definitely be three because of the Buzz Garb. Um, you're fine against other Garb decks usually with this, but Buzz Garb is pretty rough. Um, I don't. I'm not even sure which Buzz Wool matchup I'd rather go in against: Buzz Rock or Buzz Garb. Like they're both obviously winnable, but I think I'd rather play against Buzz Rock because you at least have your abilities to dig for the things you need. Also, sorry about those alerts that keep popping up. I have to fix something on Windows after this video. Um, so yeah, Field Blower is good to get rid of opposing parallel cities and to remove float stones on a Garbotoxin Garb. Next, we have Multi-Switch. I can't imagine playing Zororock without this card. I can't believe I once did back in the day. Uh, moving energy from one of your bench Pokemon to your active Pokemon. The multi-switch plays are insane. If you have a DC stranded on a Lele from early game, you have a Rockruff with one that you just attached energy to, poof. You have a charged up Rockruff or Lycanroc ready to go in with Claw Slash or Dangerous Rogue. Um, I've even used multi-switch just to switch from a Lele to a Zorark to more efficiently use my energy. Maybe not attach for turn if I was running low. Uh, really great utility card. 
For a puzzle of time, how could you not play this in a Zorark deck? It's so easy to draw cards. Uh, if you play two cards, put two cards from your discard pile into your hand. Unfortunately, I find myself playing one puzzle a lot. Way more than I should. Um, but sometimes if you have to play one puzzle early to get a good top deck, you can play two puzzles for a puzzle and a card, and then two more puzzles later for two cards. So it works out, and puzzle is a great card. Uh, one Rescue Stretcher. Um, this is mostly for against Buzzwool when... So, like, four of your attackers, Buzz, uh, Zorark GX, you're not using them hardly at all against Buzzle if you can help yourself from doing so. So you really want to get back things like your Lycanroc, your Mewtwo, and your Mew EX, and cycle through those attackers. Um, in a pinch, sometimes you do need a Zerua or a Rockruff as well. Um, just an extra utility so you don't have to waste Puzzle on Pokemon. Two timer balls, better than Evo Soda for this deck because you can search for a Lycanroc and put it to your hand, then use Bloodthirsty Eyes. Unfortunately, it is flippy. Um, at my second place tournament, the uh, second place League Cup report from last week or something, you might uh, remember me saying that I was getting terrible luck with timer balls. Uh, this weekend, it really turned around. I got a lot of double heads with my timer balls. Maybe only one double tails. Uh, luck was in my favor with these this past weekend. <clears throat> four Ultra Ball. Discard two cards from your hand. Search your deck for a Pokemon. Your vanilla draw support. One Reverse Valley. Another cute idea I got from Eric Ansman's article on Poke Beach. Um, your dark Pokemon do 10 more damage to your opponent's active Pokemon. In a pinch you can use this against an opponent's Baby Buzz. Um, I actually played against no Buzz Rock at this tournament. I only played against Buzz Garb, um, so I didn't get to see its usefulness because of that. Um, but in testing against Buzz Rock, uh, if I'm attacking with my Zorark, I'm usually, if I'm attacking a Baby Buzz with a Zorark, I'm usually not in a great position anyway. So I'd rather not play this for those situations. Um, but I'll get into that when I talk about my changes to the deck. One Acerola, some people are cutting these from their Zorark decks. Uh, I love it too much to take it out right now. Um, it's so, so good against um, pretty much everything that isn't one-shotting you, really. Um, so it's great against other Zorark decks, Zorark Pod, Zorark Garb, and Zorark, uh, Zorark Lycanroc, the mirror match. Uh, sometimes it can be handy against a Buzzwool that Jet punched a couple times early on. Um, can be useful against uh, Lapras when they use Volcanion Prism to spread and expect a one-shot later on because of it. Uh, it can be useful in a lot of niche scenarios, and you get back resources as well, so I definitely like keeping it in there if I'm able to. Three Bridget, because you want to get this as often as possible on your first turn. Search your deck for three basic Pokemon. We need to evolve here, so we want our basics down and ready to go. One, Cynthia, and three, and for our shuffle draw, since this is a Zorak deck, we're drawing a lot with trade, as long as we have our abilities useful to us, so we don't need too much draw support outside of that. Um, I go with one, Cynthia, three, and because, because of the end, you can oftentimes punish the Garbodor decks if they get a lead on you, like Buzzwell Garbodor. If they Garbotoxin, then you end them to a low hand, and the Garbotoxin can hurt them more than you, potentially. Three Guzma, even though we're playing two Lycanroc that can also Gust, I wanted a more reliable source of bringing Pokemon up. Uh, but I will talk about this count uh, right after I go over this specific deck list on the changes that I'm making for the future. One Mallow, search your deck for two cards, shuffle them, put them on top of the deck. And that's great for trade, because you basically get to search your deck for any two cards, as long as you have a trade available to you to draw them right after the Mallow. Great for getting things like Mew DCE, or Floatstone Mew, or something of that nature. Any two cards, really. Professor Kukui, draw two cards, your Pokemon do 20 more damage this turn. Awesome card for a deck that's kind of capped on damage outside of Dangerous Rogue GX. So you can get some cheeky knockouts that your opponent might not see coming with this. And you get to draw two cards. Uh, one Sycamore, discard draw seven. Classic supporter card. You only play one because sometimes you have really big hands with this deck. And you don't want to discard everything. But 
if you get like an early lele for a sick and you have an empty hand or like one or two cards you don't need sycamore is usually worth it so we're playing three choice and one float i am changing that uh, and i'll get to that in just a minute and then we're playing four strong energy and four dce i felt this was right enhanced hammer has been cut from most decks that have been playing it uh, and the strong energy is really, really needed against Baby Buzz. So you can Claw Slash for 130 consistently. Claw Slash for 110 is not going to cut it against Baby Buzz. Okay, so let me read off the changes I am making. We are going to... <clears throat> so this is the list that I am using currently in testing, and I really like it. Minus one Reverse Valley. Minus one Stretcher. Minus third Guzma, minus third choice. And then we're going to add second Mallow, uh, second Float, and we're going to add E Hammer. Sorry, this is Pokemon. We're going to add Enhanced Hammer and Parallel City. So that is what it looks like with the changes. So. I cut a reverse for Parallel City because I started testing the mirror right after uh, the tournament. I, I thought Zora Rock was going to really blow up at Sheffield. Um, I thought either Zora Rock or Buzz Rock would win the tournament. I wasn't like set on Zora Rock winning, but I knew it was going to be good, and I knew a lot of good players were expecting it. So now I have to be ready for the mirror match coming up at NAIC. Uh, Parallel City is much better than Reverse Valley against mirror decks against other Zorak decks. Um, also, we took out the stretcher for Enhanced Hammer. Again, Enhanced Hammer is really, really vital in the mirror match. Um, at the tournament, I got first at Steve Zhang and I played round five, the mirror match. Neither of us were playing Enhanced Hammer. If either of us were playing Enhanced Hammer and we actually hit it, it would have been wildly advantageous for whoever hit that Enhanced Hammer. Um, it's, so it's really, really good in the mirror. It, sometimes it can be useful against Buzz Rock. Um, minus the third Guzma for the second Mallow. Um, I found myself discarding the third Guzma all of the time for trade. Like, it was there. It was nice to have around in case I needed it. And it was, like, like hitting it more consistently. But I didn't really need it too often, and in testing I don't really need it too often, so I'm trying out the second Mallow in its place. Mallow's really, really nice to have in your hand on turn two. If, like, let's say you bridge it and have a Zorark in your hand, and then have a Lele or a Mallow in your hand as well, you can almost guarantee you're getting that turn two uh, Bloodthirsty Eyes to bring up what you want. Um, which is kind of like what that Guzma is there for, that consistent uh, gusting effect. You have it with Mallow because of Bloodthirsty Eyes. Um, and then the last choice is minus third. The last uh, uh, change is minus the third choice uh, for the second float, making it two choice, two float. Um, float Stone, there were so many times in testing and at the tournament and in the tournament that I went to the next day where I was just digging for float stone. I'm like, oh man, this will be great if I can just hit float stone off of a Cynthia in one trade. And I'm only playing one of it in the deck. And after that, I realized, yeah, it, I need two float. Two float for sure. Uh, you, you're moving around a lot with this deck. You know, sometimes you want to energy drive, then you want to retreat and multi-switch. And uh, sometimes you have a mute two stuck out there and you don't want to commit an energy uh, so two floats, really good, especially since we cut down on the third Guzma and that switches our Pokemon for us. We're going with two float. Uh, yeah, so I really, really like this deck moving forward. Uh, I think it has a great matchup spread. Uh, I can't imagine taking anything that's not this to NAIC. If I don't play this at NAIC, it's probably because I switched to Zoropod. But I like Zora Rock a lot better. It's um, it's much more aggressive, and Zoro Pod is pretty passive. And in this format, I think you need to be able to uh, capitalize on making skillful plays against your opponent aggressively, rather than skillfully reacting to their plays. Uh, now, don't get me wrong, Zoro Pod is an aggressive deck. It plays four Guzma or three Guzma, has a one energy attacker, does 120 or 150 with a band. So it is aggressive, it's just not as aggressive as Zorak Lycanroc. 
Um, so yeah, that's all I have to say for this tournament report and deck profile. I'm at two, 337 points. So I'm three points under needing top 512 at NAIC. So we're going for that 256. Hopefully I get it. Uh, 256 sounds really doable. So hopefully I have a good day and I get six wins. Um, so yeah, that's going to be it for me. Thanks for watching. And don't forget to check out FlipSideGaming.com where I am writing articles pretty much weekly at this point. Um, just put up a really great metagaming article uh, for metagaming in general in the Pokemon TCG. And you can use my code CELIO, all caps, for 10% off at Flipside Gaming. Uh, they have a great selection of cards uh, of Pokemon and other card games as well on their site. So, uh, yeah, that's going to be it for me. Make sure you follow me on Twitch to see more gameplay with the decks that I feature on the channel. Link in the description below. And I'll see you next time here on Celio's Network.